Thanks, Andrea. Um, a really helpful update for, for members on the work that yourself, um, Larry, and, and others in the education department have been involved in um, on, their, on the behalf of members. Um, we'll now hear from um, the SQA. I'm going to hand over to Chief Executive Fiona Robertson, Jean Blair, um, the SQA Director of Operations, and Robert Quinn, Head of Service um, from the Qualifications Division. Um, and Lee's going to sort out the uh, sharing of screens. Thanks. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you very much for inviting us uh, uh, to speak uh, with you this afternoon. Um, uh, it feels like it's an important discussion uh, and uh, an important time, actually, um, because you know I absolutely recognise uh, a lot of what's of what Andrea was was saying, and in particular, uh, you know, recognise and acknowledge that the huge challenges um, that you've all faced this year um, and the huge pressures as you support. Um, uh, both on you and as you support um, your young people, um, and and with the with the cancellation of exams, it's obviously required us all to think differently and do differently. Um, and um, and and I, th and I think Andrea has acknowledged uh, the close working with the EIS and and with others right across the system, so that it's very much a systems approach uh, to delivery. Uh, uh, this year, um, and and recognising all the challenges involved in that, but but also uh, the need, and indeed, I, I think huge progress in the or in the the whole system uh, coming together uh, to deliver for learners. And I know that that's that's what you that's what you want to do. That's what you do every year, deliver for learners, and 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 that's key uh, this year uh, in particular. Um, uh, Jean, uh, Jean, I'm joined by Jean Blair, um, Director of Operations, and Robert Quinn, who's Head of Business Languages um, and English. And um, Jean's going to take you through just a short slide deck, just uh, it, just outlining the key elements of the of the model. Some of which you will be very familiar with, and of course, uh, uh, building on what Andrea has said, we're happy to pick up on 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 some or all of those points if that would be helpful uh, to you. Um, but I, I fully appreciate this is a really critical time. It's a very, very busy time. There's a lot of anxiety um, in, in the system, and, and we're continuing to engage with you, uh, in particular through Andrea's um, membership of the working group and Larry's membership of the steering group for NQ 2021, along with others, uh, to, to work through those issues in the best way that we can. Uh, so I'll hand over to Jean now and happy to answer questions thereafter. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I hope you can hear me okay. I'm going to just share share my screen. Um, okay, is that coming through? Yeah, great it is. Thank you very much. Um, so so welcome everybody. Um, delighted to be here today. Um, it's um, it, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with Andrea. I can absolutely say that Andrea, it, just as she said at the start of her um, of her presentation, the number of items that she has raised within the group, she absolutely has. Um, and, and of course, we're we're joined by a range of other stakeholders in the group. So some things, you, you know, we feel quite strongly about, and we make progress in. And other things, we have to accept the views of other stakeholders uh, as as we have shaped this model. Um, you, I'm sure you'll be familiar with the model itself, but we're actually now in stage two of the five stage model. The fifth stage being the appeals process, which obviously we're still uh, defining. Although although we are getting much closer to what that will look like. But stage two uh, runs from or ran from April through to May, uh, end of May, and and this is where really um, you, you know the, you, we're thinking about the, the learning and teaching continuing, the consolidation of that, shaping assessments, thinking about quality assurance, and as you know, um, last week we sent out notification of our selections for quality assurance uh, of, of what we're going to be doing under the the, the national quality assurance program. And then, you know, in later stages, we, we do intend to make sure as a, as, a, as, a, as a group, the NQ group will continue to signpost to you um, what to expect, you know, coming up through the various stages and, and where it is that's important that we all um, take stock of, of what it is that we've done and what it is that we need to be doing in the next stage. But right now we are in stage two. Um, just a, a wee reminder, and again, Andrea touched on this, um, it, it is important that in shaping the model, we, the model was then 
supported by roles and responsibilities. So the group has um, been very clear about saying, you know, what all the various stakeholders are doing. Um, so that would include um, um, the Education Scotland, SQA, local authorities, schools, colleges, and um, the SCIFs for the independent schools. And then you've got uh, schools, uh, colleges, senior management teams and what departments would be doing as well. So we've all got within these uh, five stages roles and responsibilities as, as part of that uh, process. And, and, the, and, the, and the point of that is to make sure that we get professional judgment at the heart of the model, that the evidence is based on demonstrated attainment and that we have um, a robust and credible set of results, provisional results by the 25th of June. Um, that it's been co-created, as I've said, I've mentioned some of the partners there, but importantly, we also have young people represented by the Scottish Youth Parliament, and we also have the National Parent Forum of Scotland eh, on, on, the, on the steering group. So we do have the learner and parent voice eh, in this, and, and, and that's important, particularly when we think about um, equalities in children's rights and wellbeing considerations underpinning all the decisions and actions that we take here. We are you know, to, you know, making sure that we can conduct impact assessments of, of the of the processes and, and decisions as we go. And, and, and just a special plea here, obviously there is a shared responsibility for communicating the alternative certification model and, and for securing the, the buy-in of that model um, and, and to, to make sure that we instill confidence in, uh, in the public and also amongst learners about what it is that we're doing as an alternative to exams, the exam diet being cancelled, the external exam diet being cancelled. So we've all got a part to play there and, and I will be touching on, a, uh, on communications later on in the presentation. Work to date, um, you, you'll be aware that we spent a bit of time uh, with subject experts, actually with practising teachers, working through modifications to the assessment requirements. Uh, that was followed in extensive uh, consultation, and that was obviously recognising that there had been disruption to learning. Uh, and, and was, it's with a view to having maximised learning and teaching uh, over the course of this year. We did publish a number of uh, documents which are subject specific, and along with a range of assessment materials uh, following the cancellation of the exams and of course we've had an extensive programme of understanding standards uh, and online events and I know that those have been well attended and well received um, so, so, so thank you very much for that. As I have stressed, demonstrated attainment is at the heart of the certification model and, and, as, and, and as Andrea has said that's really important because you know it's about um, setting assessments, making assessment judgments, recording those, sharing progress with, with, with learners. It should be on, on familiar and comfortable territory, much more so than inferred attainment. So demonstrated attainment has absolutely been at the heart of this model. And of course, we then had to think about how that would be rolled out uh, beyond National 5 into high and advanced higher uh, and updating all the roles, responsibilities and impact assessments when that happened. In terms of the quality assurance um, prior to the submission of uh, provisional results, it is important, and again, it's stated within roles and responsibilities, that it's not just national quality assurance here. It's about what happens in schools and colleges at the local level. You know, particularly if you're if you're if you're new into the department, you know, how can you be absolutely sure that what you're doing is consistent with what other teachers are doing in the department? So it should really be seen as a as a really supportive process from right from local level in, into local authorities uh, where, where local authorities apply uh, for the state schools and and SQA and SQA is also working a very supportive model of quality assurance. We are here to support uh, in, in making sure that we arrive at the at the right judgments and do and do the right thing by by learners. So um, what we're all working towards, as you know, is, is that we, we originally had a date of the 28th of May. It was moved to the 25th of June in, in light of there being some disruption and, and, and the need to make sure that we maximise the learning and teaching time. So provisional results uh, are due into SQ by a later date of the 25th of June. And just to be really clear on this point, SQA will not be making any changes to the data. We do, a, a, as we do every year, a series of reconciliation checks to pick up on things where data might be missing or where there might be a transposition error that a centre's flagged. But we will not, not be making any changes to the the data that is submitted for provisional results. And I think it's really important that you uh, that I stress that point. In terms of the national quality assurance exercise. 
all it includes all centres. Um, it is proportionate. It depends on the number. You know, we've, we've, we've worked a kind of sliding scale depending on the number of courses that have offered, how many um, selections we've then um, made of your centre. The selections are random, with the select, with the exception of where centres are new to delivering that subject. Um, we have selected. Um, we'll, we'll be asking you to select five learners from across a range of attainment uh, and, and from all teachers, if possible, delivering the selected course. And of course, I'm very conscious of some departments and some schools being very big, but as much as possible trying to give us give us the spread there. And, and, and that's something which you decide will, will be uh, sent across to us. The assessment evidence can be partial or incomplete. It can be paper, it can be digital format, but it must be the same for each individual learner. So we can't have a combination of digital and paper for one learner. It needs to be one or other. But I think, and I know already, there's a lot of centres that are interested in, in, the, in the digital evidence as part of their submission, but we're not looking for the full the full evidence for, for each candidate. It, ca it can be um, partial or incomplete. And we will be giving you um, subject specific feedback where you have been selected in your centres for specific subjects. We will be giving you subject specific feedback, but we will be uh, providing key themes and messages for for all uh, for, for most subjects and levels. Uh, and that will be available to all centres and we're aiming to have that done uh, by, by um, the, the first week in June. So other key, key points then just to highlight this. Um, as Andrea has said, we did have a consultation in Peels. We, we, know, we know the strength of feeling of EIS members. Thank you very much for, for taking the time to complete the consultation. If you, if you did, we do, we do appreciate the feedback. It was genuinely a consultation. It did include a number of options and models, which are which are um, appeals processes, not, not just within, within SQA, but across other jurisdictions. But yes, uh, it did have a range of, of models, some of which were more popular than others. Um, we have made some adjustments to the assessment of National 4, as you know, um, and the added value unit uh, assessment this, this session is optional. For those colleagues that come particularly from the college sector, as well as delivering NQ provision, we have made a number of modifications to vocational qualifications. We do have a group that helps us. There is, just as we've got an NQ group, we've got an HN vocational qualification group, and Colleges Scotland and EIS and others are all represented on, on that group. And they have helped guide some of the conversations that we've had in that in that space. And we will continue to engage with stakeholders uh, as we consider approaches for session 2021-22. For example, some of the modifications this we've made this year should they continue into 21-22. Those, those are sorts of, uh, sorts of conversations that we need to we need to have. And and we've set up um, a help desk. If you've got any inquiries about the qualifications, um, you can just uh, use that email address there. Qualification development at sk.org.uk. I touched on communication. I'll, I'll mention this very briefly, um, but, but it is important um, because I think it, it, it all, again, contributes to knowledge of the model amongst learners, parents, uh, ourselves, other stakeholders. Um, and, and it's really important as part of that that we do hear the learner voice. Um, they, have, they have rights under UN CSR, CRC um, and the Children's Commissioner is, is taking a, a very keen interest in what we've been doing with the model and the appeals process. So they are represented by the Scottish Youth uh, Parliament. Um, we've got clear communications and have worked closely with the two uh, representative stakeholder groups there to help shape some of those communications directly to, to learners and parents. Um, again, published a lot of vocational qualifications guidance out to schools and local authorities, and we do have a dedicated web space for NQ and HN uh, VQ provision in 2021. The on, there's ongoing promotion of understanding standards materials and the subject guidance. And again, folks, you, you know, please take advantage of that because learning and teaching should continue uh, up, up through to the end of the session. Um, and we will, uh, in fact, and, and we did publish further guidance on the National Quality Assurance. Um, so if you're, if if you go onto our website, you sh you should be able to access that. Okay, uh, that was published on the twenty third of April, along with further guidance on the Provisional Results Service, which has actually opened today. Um, We've provided further updates to centres um, ahead of the stage two for the ACM. That was on the 13th of April. Um, and that was really to reinforce some of the messages that um, Andrea picked up on saying demonstrated attainment, 
teacher professional judgment, um, making sure that you, it's it's the it's the um, the quality of the evidence, not quantity, and um, that you don't have to replicate. You know, you, the the full boon of exams and invigilation and all those sorts of things. It's it's making sure that the assessments are flexible according to the conditions that which, which we've said for the subjects. So it, it, we're really trying to make sure that those messages were reinforced as early as we could in April for schools returning after Easter. We've had ongoing communication with our appointees and and we're here we're here tonight but we are engaging with other professional associations SLS, NASWIT, SST and others for example and as I've said the consultation on appeals is 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 has also concluded as well. So that's all that I think we want to say from SQE and like Andrea are very happy uh, to take any questions from from colleagues here tonight. Thank you very much indeed.